Okay, everybody, how we doing tonight? Uh, welcome to the North Carolina Cryptid and Paranormal Project. We're going live streaming tonight with Brian Bowden. He is the director and founder of the New York State Sasquatch organization, and I'm glad to have him here to interview him tonight. So, Brian, welcome to the uh, live stream tonight. How you doing? I'm doing great. I thank you very much for having me on here. I want to I want to get my my little live streaming thing up on Facebook so I can see it, so I can see those gun questions coming. Yeah. <laughs> But it's great. Thank you for having me on. And and uh, I just want to say to Miss B, I, I don't know what you're going through, but we're there for you. And uh, if you need any help, of course, you know, uh, I'm there. If, if I can help you out, I'm going to. That's how we roll. So, mm -hmm. so that, that's the Miss B crowd. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm trying to open up the chat real quick. It's saying sure. li live viewer comments show up on StreamYard. This is an example, and then it says hi. I'm clicking on it, and it says show. So I guess nobody's in the live yet because there's no comments showing. Nothing. So I'm, just... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go into the group real quick and try to post a comment just to make sure it's open before we start. Yeah, I'm just yep. I'm just trying to do I'm like a little testing. Myself. Sure. Make sure it's it's on. There we go. I see it. I see it. We start. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get rid of down. my volume so that yes. I don't double dip on this thing. Okay. Yep. But it's up now. Yeah. Now I can see uh, where, you know, when questions come, I can kind of look a little bit to the left. I have like two things here. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of the technical stuff for, for uh, BPS and, and uh, you know, when Al, Al has an issue. <laughs> Al has an issue. Well, you know, Al, Al always says he's not very technical savvy and, and I can't blame him because, I mean, I know I know a decent amount about computers, but I just know enough to get myself out of trouble. I also don't know <laughs> I also know enough how to get myself into trouble. So I gotta oh, watch. Yeah. yeah, I gotta watch computers because they'll they'll you know they'll mess your whole world up. So you know. Oh, it's yeah, it's tough. I I used to do you know, I used to tell my wife, um, I don't care if God sent you the email, don't open the attachment. <laughs> yeah, and you just have to go into registries. Um, I, you know, so we we have both. We have PCs and Macs, but it's a pain. You have to have it. See, here's the problem. When you get into this paranormal thing, there's a lot of great programs that you get for free, okay, yeah. that you could use for your investigations. You could use to, to uh, create videos for publishing to your, you know, what you found. Mm -hmm. um, and, and majority of them are PC-based. So you're going to need a PC in some capacity, but you're also going to need to um, – you're going to need to have – a uh a mac every once in a while because it's just a little bit faster on certain processing yeah. things so for a second there i thought that was my child so and i'm glad okay. to know folks we're real people we have other things going on yeah yeah <laughs> i have and that's in the other room so i don't i don't i don't have a real high-tech studio this is my this is my you know my uh this is kind of like a spare room slash weight room <laughs> slash studio yep. you know so i got it set up however i got to do it because you know this this uh this kind of you know, lifestyle doesn't pay the bills. My real job pays the bills. And this is kind of like a hobby and a passion. So yeah, what no, it is. It, you know what? I mean, it's the same thing here. Mm -hmm. um, we do uh, uh, my real job is we have a, a printing company a marketing. So we'll do the t-shirts. We do the swag type of stuff mm -hmm. uh, for events and for people, for companies. Even we do a lot of paranormal stuff <laughs> for people. Tell them to hush up. That is Al right there. Al, go to uh, uh, Facebook, whatever it is, or, or StreamYard.com slash Facebook and reveal yourself. You're a rat bastard. <laughs> so, uh, Brian, let's let's talk about you. Uh, I, I would say um, what kind of got your passion started into, like, the cryptid field, paranormal, Bigfoot, UFOs? Kind of what, what got you started into it? Uh, monster movies growing up. You know, sci-fi, monster movies, that type of stuff. Um, loved it. L you know, I'm I'm a bit older than some other people, but you know, not as old as Lon Chaney was. But you know, you'd watch some of the old Abbott and Costello, um, or you know, Lon Chaney and and Bella Gosi, and I love that stuff. Um, so we always had some monsters. Uh, you know, talk about it. Uh, ghosts weren't like really anything like it is today. This paranormal like ghost hunting um it was the ghost of mrs muir or some really weird thing but what really threw me for a loop was uh, cryptids um loch ness monster uh bigfoot you know those were the main cryptids there there weren't all the strange stuff we have today 
And um, what's what's interesting is my father worked for the Associated Press, Y World. He was a he's a paparazzi guy. He was a photographer, but he also sold stuff. Okay. And I would I would talk about UFOs or whatever, and he he search his archive and bring me all these like amazing photographs um, that are very well known. You know, he had copies of it, so I had eight by tens, and I'd show my friends like, look at this one, look at this one. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I had a, I had a few photos of the 1957 um, UFOs over the Capitol, right? And, and the you know, it, it was pretty interesting because there wasn't much to go research. I mean, there was like four books, you know. And everybody like, oh, those aren't real, you know. Yeah. Well, let's fast forward. <laughs> so that's what that's what got me started in saying, you know, I'd like to go to I want to go to Loch Ness. I want to go to Stonehenge or, or all these places. And as I got older, um, I realized I could do that. You know, I have this thing called a car or I get on a plane and I've been to a variety of different countries, you know, spending time in different locations, you know, uh, researching it and looking for certain things, you know, uh, some kind of contact. But in general, like when we talk cryptids, because you guys do a lot of cryptid stuff, yeah. growing up, all the cryptids that were there, Bigfoot, and um, it was Sasquatch, Bigfoot, whatever you want to call it. I call it Bigfoot. Um, and all of that, from what my knowledge was, Pacific Northwest, right? So you have the Patterson Gibson film, uh, Gibbon film, which I think is the holy grail of Peru. Yeah, you can't. I, yeah I, I just, I love that. I, I know there's a lot of controversy now. Oh, it's someone in a suit because someone came forward. Um, and I got to be honest, I think it's about this money instead of anything else. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's 100% real. I mean, you can see the muscle mass. It was, it, we were lucky that that took place. You can and see then, the muscle mass and you could also see, I'm just going to say, yeah. you can see, you can see TNA because uh, okay, I'm trying yeah, to keep yeah. it safe. I mean, she's got a badunk dunk and she's got a chest and you oh, can yeah. see them things jiggling when she's walking. There's no costume that could, uh, no costume can, can, can fake that, that, that walk with the jiggle on, no. both, on both sides. I mean, I'm not trying to be perverted, but the anatomy of a body, I mean, you can see those things moving and you can tell they're just, I mean, they're full of something. So right. she had I a mean, baby nearby, obviously. Well, she probably did, or yeah. she's just a, a very big woman. <laughs> you know? um, but what's, what's interesting is if you took, if you did that in today's day and age and you put uh, a silicone suit on a person, mm -hmm. like a female that was like maybe a bodybuilder female and with silicone, you could fake a video like that because silicone picks up your muscle movement. And right. your muscle. So you see the muscle mass. But we're talking about decades ago when they didn't mm -hmm. have it. They weren't using it. No. I mean, I know these guys wanted, they were in desperate for some kind of film or whatever. or And they literally spent the time in the middle of nowhere and they got it. And they now, got, do you amazing. buy that? Do you buy that whole story that like there was like a Canadian, uh, you know, a uh, cryptid hunting squad there that killed a bunch of, uh, you know, killed like seven of them for because loggers were complaining that they were, you know, being harassed by these Bigfoots and and the Gimlin, you know, footage was pretty much just kind of happened by luck because they caught, you know, whatever was going on afterwards, the aftermath. Or are you? I mean, do you buy that? Do you believe any of that or no? No, I don't. No. Uh, I don't believe it at all. Um, you know, <laughs> it's really interesting how people. For, for years, decades, none of this came out. Nobody was talking about it, you know. And then all of a sudden, when certain people pass away and whatever, people are bold enough in this day and age to say whatever they want. Um, but I think what's going on there is pure luck. Mm -hmm. and, and when it gets to this creature, um, it is a lot of luck because it's elusive for a reason. Um, and... You know, I don't think it was a hunting team or, you know, anybody else going in there and saying, well, they're 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 harassing the loggers, so we're going to kill them. Um, nah, it's not going to happen. I mean, these things are massive. And I'll tell you what, I don't think we had anything that was available to people back then that one shot, one kill. I don't think that would have happened with this. This is um, this is a big, big big animal and 
you need to put a lot of rounds into it to take it down, in my opinion. Uh, even with, you know, near a headshot, I don't know, you know, what they're thinking, but nope. It's, it's the real deal. And unfortunately, you know, someone's going to always come out and try to, you know, piss on your parade. So, well, then you got, you know, uh, what's that guy's name? Tom, uh, Tom, <sighs> the guy that offered a million dollars for the bounty of a, yeah. A, body uh tom c no that's not oh, i forgot his i know i know who you're talking about him and his father were doing it they were the, the older father and then the younger son they're both named was tom and tom jr yep. uh, i forgot they're out of um i could see where it, it, lower half of the country i forgot exactly where they were but they, they actually bamboozled that guy uh gilbert you know russell what was his name gilbert uh the guy that actually had encounters that they kind of went to his and, and they kind of just blew him off afterwards because because he couldn't pr you know provide no evidence right. uh, when well, they took him out. You know what? It, it's there's a lot of people. There's a lot of stories about people taking these things out, and I'm sure in instances they have been taken out. But that's something you know. It's not like you throw the old days where you used to throw a deer on top of your hood of your car and drive it down the highway. I mean. You're talking about um, no. <laughs> something eight to nine feet tall. We're talking, I mean, thousands of a thousand plus pounds. You're you're not you're not picking. If you took it out, you need uh, a team of people to get it out. You know, and put it on a truck. So where where are you going with it? And Biscardi. Then, the guy's name is Biscardi. Tom Biscardi. Biscardi. Yeah, okay. Tom Tom Biscardi. He's the one offering a million dollars. You know, a bounty for any body produced to him and, and i think that one guy i uh, forgot his name but he he brought him he brought him with he, he brought a pretty much a freezer with dead body animal parts with a filled in a fur suit you remember that yeah 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 yeah. i remember those, the, those and that guys. Was like big hoaxers and you know they, got, they were in georgia yeah georgia guys that were doing it these are the same guys i think they have a bigfoot museum i don't know they may even be in north it's either north carolina uh or georgia one of the two states. Someone, someone had something there. Um, here's the problem. <laughs> I'm going to get into something, and, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get <coughs> crushed by a million people when I say this. So when I started following this stuff, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I thought this was, it's, it's part of the ape family. It's the missing link. It's flesh and blood, right? Yes. And then I had an experience where it went from point A to point B in a split second. I mean, we're going talking about point A being two miles away from point B. Okay. The only way that can possibly happen is one, you can't run that fast. You would have to create some kind of way to transport yourself from point A to point B in an instant. And that's where I got into the fact that I think these creatures have the ability to travel interdimensionally and have been doing so for a while. Um, and there's more, as you start going through the process and looking at the evidence, there's more and more stories where there's lights connected to Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sightings. When you have a Sasquatch, you have a UFO or light encounter. Orbs, yeah, orbs. Is, orbs is huge. Yes. Yeah, orbs well, are very big. I uh, was I was talking with Greg Yost, the, you know, the Squatch Man yeah. um, from Indiana, and he had a he had I think he said a, a group of twelve Sasquatch in one of the parks in Indiana where he researches at, and he was going to his Jeep, and it was a stormy night, I think, and the road was blocked with logs after they came back and before they pulled in, the road was clear. So imagine that. So yeah. after, after he seen the squatches run off, all he saw was lights in the woods and it wasn't, it was no body. It was just lights like orbs. Right. And he so, talked about it twice. Right. So, um, and this, this comes about, I've seen some, uh, several photos in a row, boom, boom, boom type of evidence, the blob squatchy thing. But what's very interesting when you see the 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 photos, the quick photos, it's a it's it's something that's there. Definitely, it has the conical head, and it's like okay, that looks like a creature, you know, possibly a Bigfoot. Um, 
And then as you take the next and next and next, and then it disappears in between that area, there's this white blob that appears in certain mm -hmm. spots. And what I think is it's tr it, when, when this creature transforms from physical and goes interdimensional, it actually has to transform its energy, its body mm -hmm. to do so. And in the process, there is an electronic or electric type of, of, of energy that is created. It has to convert itself from physical to particle. Wow. And that's what it does. And that's why you're seeing the light. And that's why they just disappear. Mm. And, you know, um, a lot of this is going to eventually be explained by quantum physics mm -hmm. down the line. We're, we're in that baby infancy of this, but a, a lot of this is going to be explained because we have the ability now, and we've done it and a couple other countries have done it, to transmit a particle or, or, or something from Earth up into space and then back. Yeah. And they're able to, to quantify it. They can do it. They've repeated it. So the ability to take something that's physical, convert it into a particle or something to transmit it, and then have it come back and reset as a particle or f physical is real. Yeah, that's, so, it. that's interesting you say that because... I was listening to a podcast with Ron Moorhead recently uh, on another, and, and he was pretty much saying everything you're saying with the um, particles, and, and he was talking about, like, dark matter. Yes. And he, and he also mentions a lot of the, you know, the quantum physics on how they, you know, how they do things and how they move around and, and travel into other dimensions or realms. And also another um, another note, you know, Kat Hansen always mentions that they, they come from other realms and they yep. come into our realm and they're only here for a little bit of time, whether they're learning something, they're just jumping in to get a snack, they leave. And I mean, it makes sense what all these places or all these um, encounters or people have sightings and then you, you see one footprint and that's all you see. And then that's, it. you know, it just disappears, vanishes thin air. Right. Um, I love Ron Moorhead. I actually got a chance to interview him. Uh, right. He is, he's one of the guys I, I remember from way back when, when there was very little. Mm -hmm. The Sierra sounds came out and you heard yeah. that chatter and you're like, what yeah. the heck is this? And a lot of people aren't on his train. They're not mm -hmm. believing him, you know, but you got to say something with Moorhead, um, which makes him fantastic is he's independently wealthy. Mm -hmm. He's an independent businessman. I don't know how wealthy he is, but he's got enough money to do whatever he wants when he wants. Um, so it's not about money and it's not about fame. It's about information because he was, he was taken back by this. He didn't think like, hey, uh, these things aren't, you know, he, like these are real. Um, and uh, I don't know who the Facebook user is, but good kudos. Um, but uh, thank you. But, you know, he is doing this legitimately. He's traveled to Russia. Mm -hmm. he's, he's talked to Russian scientists. What's wonderful about quantum physics and how it relates to all the stuff paranormal wise is um, the things that we can do now are mind blowing. Like, let's say you have, um, and this goes along with the Sasquatch, but let's say you have a certain issue in your family line of certain type of cancer, right? So it's in your DNA, it's in, you know, in your body. Now, the way the US does it, it cuts up these little spices, boom, boom, boom. And then it tries to fit pieces back in and it takes forever. It doesn't, it works, but it doesn't work that effectively. Mm -hmm. What the Russians are doing is they're taking the code and they're just, they're just substituting the good code into it instead of cutting it out electronically mm -hmm. and particularly beaming it into the subject. So literally, they're, you know, we all, like, I'm a big boy. I have friends that can eat whatever they want. They're diesel, they're cut, and they don't have to exercise whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's a certain genetic trait that they have. You, in theory, can then take these traits and then add them to your DNA, have them sent electronically through you, through light or laser, and your DNA is reprogrammed, and all of a sudden, you're now you're losing weight because your body's like the same mode as your buddy's body. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of variables here, but he's right. See, this is where there's a big fight going on right now. Al, it, Al is just livid. You know, I do work with Al. <laughs> He, him and I are brothers on this, but um, he doesn't like the term woo. 
you know, yeah. ooh, the woo. Yeah. Um, and I agree with them. I think it's 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 disgusting, it's disparaging. I mean, we're all wearing tinfoil hats to begin with. Now these kids have special tinfoil hats, you know, the woo people. So it's like, you know, and then you have the, you know, you have these everybody's putting into their group. Like you have the it's the ape group or the um, hey Dave. Um, and it's you know, it's uh it's the, the the people that think they're interdimensional, this you know, and they're fighting with each other. But if you're truly going to research and investigate this cryptid, seeing as nobody has one that is readily available to do some experiments with, then in order to investigate properly, no matter what camp you are, you can't discredit one side or the other. Yep. I always, I have, from the beginning, and Al will say it too, I have hypothesis after hypothesis on this cryptid. It's this, it's this, it's this, it's that. And then I, I put my, my, you know, what my facts are. And just when we think we have it, something comes and throws it for a loop. Um, thank you, Lieutenant. <laughs> um, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So the whole thing is, if you really want to investigate this, don't naysay the person that thinks they're interdimensional. And don't naysay the, the one that says, Oh, it's all part of uh, Gigantopithecus, and they're you know part of the ape family. We don't know. We don't have one. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, we're, I, I don't have one in my backyard. If I did, I probably wouldn't tell anybody, and I still wouldn't know. Yeah. You know, because either they would, either the government or whatever group would come in and take it, or I'd be dead, or both. Yeah, if you have some, you know, some men in black or some secret organizations, some three-letter alphabet agencies out there, uh, and that they'd be there to silence you. They take you take the, the specimen, and they would tell you, you know, they threaten you. Oh you yeah, know, we'll, we'll, we'll pretty much make your whole existence disappear, wipe out your whole, you know, driving record, your social security. Yeah, you know, pretty much make you make you nameless and make like you never existed if you say anything. That's kind of yeah. It, I mean, and you know, um, they do other things that are are like even worse than that um, right. a lot of the things that they, they they threaten with is um relates to uh child pornography or pet yep. whatever it is i've uh, noticed that people that a lot of whistleblowers they wind up with child porn charges and right. they, all they are is whistleblowers that, that that pretty much you know blew some major corporation uh ceo out of out of the water for something they did and then right. all of a sudden that person is labeled as a you know, child porn charges and this and that. And yep. you, you never hear about it again. It's all just washed under the rug. And, you know, there's, nothing a, you know there's a UFO person that I, I, I thoroughly still believe as a valid person that got put in jail for it. Um, and I, I don't think there was actual physical proof or whatever it was. It was a government case, whatever it was. I don't know the full details. So, you know, I'm not a, I mean, me personally, if you're a pedophile, you should be just terminated. You know, mm -hmm. we're done. Absolutely. Um, it's not even if when be even I, I thought that before I had kids, but uh, you know, uh, but this is what takes place. I mean, we had um we had a lot of people, um people I know and you know that that have had issues with uh, uh men in black types and, and what have you, and until I, I actually get that threat personally, um I'm just going to, you know, take it as it comes and, and keep doing what I do. I mean, I do know certain people. And when a threat actually came technically through a third, uh, uh, another party about me, they knew about me, whatever. So I contacted a few people I know. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, they've, you know, they investigated and they're, they're let's just say they do a lot of fun stuff for our country without getting any credit mm. uh, you know so you have nice. to investigate it and it's just yeah. it's look nothing's worth losing your life or you know your your, your family or over you or know, your job your pension your yeah. you know, whatever social security yeah retirement, I mean, insurance. Social security i wish i had that oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but again we go back to i'm going to keep investigating these things so i was just i'm going to circle back to yeah. let's just I think we should, as a group, just try to keep keep the ideas open. Look, you may not subscribe to that interdimensional, but uh, you can't. You got to keep it there. Got to keep it in the box there somehow. 
Uh, yeah, it is a beat me up, Scotty. I'm looking at the, the the comments. You have to keep that there because I've there's been too many times where where I've been out by myself or with Al, and then I talk and I interview somebody and I throw something at them that I've experienced, and they're like, "Ooh," mm-hmm. and you know, you suggest that you know you may want to try this because this happened. And it, it totally opens up something for them. Or the greatest is when someone comes to you and says, you know, you should try boom, boom, boom. And you and it just, it, it triggers information in your head. Like, oh my God, we were supposed to do that. Maybe we'll, you know, and it works. It, it, it fills a key void. But um, it's, it's a great, I mean, I love it. You're down in, you're down in Sasquatch country. I mean, uh, yeah. I don't, <laughs> my go out. My backyard, I do all the time. Yeah, I've got all kinds of structures, X's. I've had some footprint track pictures I took. Um, I've got whooped at. I've got howled at. I was riding my four wheeler recently in back of my house, and, That's cool. and I have a race bike. It's one of them two stroke, one of them ying ying ying, one of those loud ones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, it's a Suzuki LT two fifty R quad racer, nineteen eighty eight. You know, the rattle rattle machine rocket. You know, pretty much hold on and. <laughs> pray for your life but uh yep. it was to say i was riding in the woods and i, I was kind of opened up power band second gear just going down a little slip and to the left of me i heard something whooping at me and it had to be loud because it was louder than my four-wheeler and it overpowered yeah. the sound of my you know my exhaust that i could hear the engine and all i hear is just that whoo and it was just it was kind of reverberating into me as well and I had, I, I, I had no phone all i had is my little pocket pistol 380 with hollow points in it and that wasn't going to do nothing. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to get out of here because I probably woke. I, I think I was talking to Al. I probably woke something up that was sleeping, you know, taking a little, <laughs> taking a little, uh, you know, like the day watchers. You know, they're yeah. probably sleeping under a log, and I woke it up. Probably scared the shit out of them. Yeah, you crazy just yelling, kids. He's just yelling like, get out of here! And his, you know, whoop. it's it's old man Witherspoon at the lighthouse. <laughs> yeah. um, well, you know what I mean. If you if you do have that, I don't know if it would it would help you out, but. Yeah. I would GoPro it, or, or better than GoPro, um, I've been using this uh, Bo, Bovo, um, Bo Love or whatever it is. Um, I use a body camera, and it works okay. in day and night. It's like 72 hours. You can, you can mount it to the front of that thing, mount it to the back. Now, Absolutely. the noise factor is going to mess that up. Mm-hmm. But if you get visuals of it, wow, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. You know, because they're not going to be expecting to see – that kind of, you know, even at night, mm-hmm. they're going to see your headlights or whatever. and not going to see the uh, lighting of uh, the camera. So they're not going to expect that, I think. Well, they're going to um, smell you from, you know, half a mile away. They're going to see you from, you know, over 100 yards because they're all they're, they're, there's all, you know, guards, guard, you know, guarding sentries looking around to watch, watch the, you know, the pretty much perimeter area. So there's always one on watch. Um, yeah. And just like you said, with the cameras, you know. That you were talking about the whole, uh, you know, the par- not I wouldn't say paranormal, but the um, the uh, the theory of what goes on with you know, like Ron Moorhead's thing. Uh, I've had pictures on my my deer camera, and it would just be like a white shadow and nothing there, almost like almost like a mist, and and, yeah. and, it, and it's like three shots of just like a mist, and and it, it triggers, and then there's nothing, and the, you know the corn pile is still there, no deer, no nothing. It's just like a mist area. It's very interesting. So getting back into what these Sasquatch can do for a long time before I went, before I jumped the shark into, uh, into interdimensional. Right. Um, I was, I was very big on inter- infrasound for a long time because uh, remember when the exorcist movie came out, my cousin came yeah. over to our, our, our house and I was in bed, but he started playing the theme. So that'll wake you up, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and he was telling, um, he, I kind of was up. They let me stay up a little bit there, and and he was talking about the guy. He knew the guy that that did the the um, the sound for The Exorcist. Um, and what was great about it was, it was the first movie ever to use infrasound in the soundtrack. That's right. why that movie was like creepy, and it got on everybody's nerves. And there, everybody's like, "Ooh, yeah. this is you know scary," because it used certain frequency levels that really hit you in those spots that create the fear cage and uneasiness and queasiness. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so successful. But I believe that Bigfoot has the ability to do, to use infrasound. And I think they have the ability to not only use it 
you know, for vocal wise hearing, but visually, I think they're because of what they can do interdimensionally, they have a way of using infrasound where it kind of affects the 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 wavelength of light, the light spectrum, visible and non-visible, mm -hmm. and electronics. Okay, because a lot of people report the same thing when Bigfoot's there and disappears or whatever, and they see the lights. There's a drain on their batteries, mm -hmm. or there's drain on that. Like, oh, my cards is so much. I've heard, hard. I've heard that. You know, cell right. phone battery goes dead. All that. Right. So what's happening is they know who humans are. They know what a camera looks like. Okay. They have the ability through their infrasound and what they can do. Wow. Naturally, to manipulate the wavelength. That's why you get a lot of blob squatches. Mm -hmm. And I say the reason, the only time you get a non-blob squatch type of um uh, image is when mostly if if you're significantly far away where you can kind of like use telescope you know telescope or uh you know like a tele telephoto lens big time like for filming mm -hmm. national geographic did a movie right. about something and they caught a bigfoot it was in a scene with buffalo or a herd of animals and no one noticed it at the time, but just below this herd was like a little, you know, little bluff area. And this thing came out. It went into one part of the bluff, disappeared, and then it came out the other side. Oh, it's wow. on film, but on, also there's um, there's um, what do you call it? The, there was an eagle camera. I think it was in Pacific Northwest someplace. And they were looking at the nest because the eagles were going to I remember hatch. that the eagle the eggs were, yeah, the eagle was right. going to lay the eggs and they were waiting for it to hatch. Right. And right. then if you remember that video, someone said that, look, if you look to the right of that camera, you could see to the floor of the, the forest. Mm -hmm. Now, eagles go pretty high up. I'm going to say a couple of stories, you know, 10, maybe 40 feet sometimes, you know, as high as you can get. That's where mm -hmm. that's their perch. Yeah. Um, but you could see down to the floor and um, on there and, and the floor, you see what looks like a monkey like playing around down there. Um, wow. You know, it, it was, it was pretty interesting. And I, I think the reason why you caught that and fairly clear was because that, that Bigfoot had no clue that up, up above him, mm. 50 feet was a camera. Had he known the camera was there, one, he would never would have gone to it. And two, he would have just, you know, he would, he could have, you know, used what he, he has naturally to do it. And this is, this is another debate. You know, people say, well, how do they do it? How do they, how do they go from, you know, physical to interdimensional? Well, let me, I, I'll follow that with, how do you breathe? Can you explain to me how you breathe? Yeah. You can't, you just do it. You do it. You came out of the womb. Doc smack your, you know what, and then, or whatever they did, and you, you start breathing, mm -hmm. okay? And you start, you know, this is, a, it's within your body to do it. How does a fish swim? It's natural. Does, uh, it's natural. Right, right. It's all natural. So this is insane. This is, this is, they just do what they do. Mm -hmm. Just because we don't have other, other creatures that mm -hmm. we're aware of that can do this doesn't mean it's not possible. So again, Put the, the hypothesis out there. Put it all going, going, you know, going straight through, you know, or or you know, you're going to suffer. You're not researching anything. If you it, you can't just because you don't like it, you can't just blow it off. It's really important to get all of it at once, and that's what I do. That's what you know, Al and I do on uh, in in the BPS and the New York State uh, Sasquatch Organization. Everything we do. We have, I mean, I have a book that has the craziest theories in it that I, every once in a while I go by and I, I, I check it out, you know, um, and I keep writing new ones because Al keeps telling me um, the new thing now is the Caracas skulls, the elongated skulls. Yeah. They're yeah. alien Bigfoot. <laughs> They're alien Bigfoot. Well, the, well, you know, at first they tried to say that they were, you know, crib headed, you know, they, they put them in the cribs and they did the thing with their head when yeah. they were babies. And that's like an ancient Aztec and, and an Ethiopian kind of for, um, yep. for, you know, so. Well, now they're trying to claim them as um, alien Bigfoot. They're they're really Bigfoot. Well, didn't they try to say they weren't alien? They denied the alien. Now they're back to the 
Bigfoot alien, you know. Now, yeah, now they're back. That the the reason why they have a conical shaped skull or a long beard is because they're actually the Bigfoot. They're part mm -hmm. of the uh, Bigfoot family down there. And I just, I'm just <laughs> like, are you kidding me? I, when I hear this, I, I just want to slam my head against the wall. I'm like, people that don't, if they, if they, they just, they need a new something to try to promote to somebody, to sell it, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, now with UFOs, it's disclosure. It's we're back to disclosure. Well, we got what June, June. They're supposed to disclose the rest in June because of the whole stimulus package that was passed. There's a bill saying, you know, the government had to fully disclose to the you know American people, you know, the rest of what was really going on, or or some kind of something in general to to give us, a, you know, another bone to, to chew on, so we will yeah. be happy, to satisfy us. That's really good because if if the people believe that I got a bridge out my window right now, I will sell it to you. <laughs> There's somebody. It it's, it's not going to happen. You got a guest in here. Yeah, it's hey, that's that's my my this cat Ward. She's out of Canada. She does uh, paranormal heart, and she's really good. She's got her own podcast, but paranormal heart. But um, a, she I call her my niece, and she calls me uncle. Nice. Um, it goes back to something from New Jersey. Um, but it's, you know, I, and there's also talk about Bigfoot. We, we went to it before with them being aliens and Sasquatch aliens and whatever. I don't believe, <laughs> I don't believe they're anything related. I think what you have is you have these beings, both beings are interdimensional. They see them in both sides and it's just like, they just follow, you know, they could, they could, I guess once, once you are, aware of something you're now open you, you're always seeing it like um before i played golf i could tell you where any golf course I, like i don't know where the golf course but now that i play golf or whatever which i played for years decades i can tell you where there's every golf course going down the east coast yeah you know it's the same thing these cryptids come here and i don't know what i don't know what the purpose is for being here um i don't know if it's like we had that you, you were saying before to get some food and then we got to go back to the, to the shelter or whatever. Yeah. I, I know that they do spend time in both. And I think that's why we don't see any bones. Mm -hmm. That's why we, 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 you know, they just disappear. Um, and that explains also if you're into David Pallady's missing 411. Yes. Those people that are walking. Hey, so I was talking, where'd he go? <laughs> vanished. Know. Vanished. In vanished. Air. Gone. Well, Think about this. If you have something that's interdimensional and you can just open it and go and pull them in, they're going to vanish in thin air. And then sometimes they're found, you know, 50 miles somewhere in a whole other vicinity. Yeah. And, you know, they don't know where they are. They lost time. They lost do this. The, the ones that make it, you know, they lost time. The ones that make it. There's others, others that they don't, don't know. They don't, they, they're, they're total oblivious to everything. They don't know what happened. They just say they were walking and then they come out, you know, 50 miles later in another state. Now, that happened in New York State. Um, mm -hmm. I forgot White White Face Mountain. They were doing uh, um, they were doing ski uh, medical emergency type right. of ski vac. Yeah, 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 ski vac. And they had a, a guy come from Canada, and he came to New York to do it. And he was part, you know, I guess he's that over in Canada, and he was coming down the mountain, and he reported that there's a storm. There's a storm coming. Get down the mountain as fast as you can. So they want to get him down. Mm -hmm. And he disappeared. And they sent in dogs. They sent in helicopters. They sent everything. They thought it was an avalanche. There was no avalanche. There's no dogs. He, he literally disappeared. And three days later, he found himself in a place. He had no idea where he was. He didn't have his license. He didn't have any money. He calls his wife Collect from where he is. And says, I don't know where I am. And I don't know how I got here. He was in California. Holy shit. So the wife goes, they're looking for you. Where are you? So eventually she, they, they, get, they got him back to the, the East uh -huh. Coast. And they were looking to see if he got on any plane. But there's no, he said, one minute I'm going down the mountain. And the next minute I'm here. I'm in, and it's hot. And I'm wearing all the ski stuff. And he has his skis. It just doesn't make sense. So I think we have a combination of a couple things going on there. Um, I think there are vortexes in, in like Bermuda Triangle, 
that I was, I was thinking that like a premier yeah. vortex where you kind of just drift off and you're, you're pretty much through a wormhole on the other side of the, you know, the, the, the country. Yup. I, I think I went out, I was talking about electronic fog, you know, um, the, you know, I think it's a vortex that, that takes place there. I don't think it's anything, um, you know, nefarious, like the UFOs or whatever. It's just right place, right time. I mean, I could have used that when I was coming back from Florida. <laughs> you know, it would have been great to drive into like South Carolina through a storm. And the next thing you know, you come out and you're like, hey, that's a GW, <laughs> you know. But um, uh, that happened to a plane coming out of uh, Bermuda, I believe, or the Bahamas. Yeah. Uh, normal, like an hour plus show. And they were, you know, 15 minutes into the flight, they get this fog. And then the next thing you know, they hear uh, Fort Lauderdale Tower or Miami Tower, like, you know, calling them a... Uh, we don't have you here, you know. I don't know. We took off, and it was like fifteen minute flight. Now, Pretty do, odd. Do you believe any that could be a possible alien abduction or alien, you know, pretty much, you know, taking somebody for testing and then putting them back somewhere else? I mean, do you think any of the four one one could be partially connected to the aliens as well? Or I, I, I think there's a lot going on there. It very, it could, it could have a little bit of an alien, you know, in certain areas certain mm -hmm. places having some kind of third party extraterrestrial uh, type of uh, event. Uh, it's easy because there's not many people around and it's very isolated and you have total, um, you know, control over that. Um, so I think that's possible, but uh, I don't think, but all, all of it's possible though. Right. Right. You know, they, they talk about, um, you know, the alien hybridation, um, you know, they're trying to make hybrids out of us to kind of, so they, their species can live among us. Do you, what do you feel? How do you, what's your feelings on that? What's your take on that part? Um, <laughs> Cause there's uh, a lot of documentaries that, that, that claim to, you know, have proof of it and these star, these so-called star child and, and so on. And these kids that, you know, people get, you know, taken aboard and yeah. they see these half alien kids that look like humans, but they don't have, you know, they just don't look right. Yeah, um, I definitely believe that that is taking place. Okay. And, um, you know, again, I've had my fair share of UFO encounters, mm -hmm. experiences. And um, <laughs> I, I've, I, I never thought I'd say this at one point, but uh, with, you know, I've had missing time for about two hours. And I was with uh, someone uh, that you know, Al, was there. We, had, we experienced missing time for two hours at another party. And um, when I was going down to Florida this last two weeks ago, um, I had another moment of missing time after seeing a light in the sky in um, near Fayetteville, uh, Route okay. 301. Um, and that's, that's a whole different ball of wax. I don't know what the heck happened then during that. But yeah, I definitely do believe that people are being abducted and it's through the bloodline. So if you're being abducted, then your mother was or your father, their parents, their parents, their parents for, for millennia, okay? Right. Um, through research and through my own you know, interviews with people, um, there's a guy named Derek Tyler who uh, wrote uh, Alien, Alien Encounters, uh, um, uh, something like, you know, uh, Alien... Uh, an inconvenient truth. And I used to talk about that with this guy, Derek, and we had him on our show and you should try to get him on yours. If you want to talk about UFOs, multiple experiences with not only aliens themselves, but the U S government doing it because they do it too. Mm -hmm. um, but basically what it boils down to is all the alien races that are here, all the interdimensional races that are doing what they do here. Um, they're all, have a problem with their DNA. They're all the last of their kind. Mm -hmm. um, and they've done things to themselves in their world and it's pretty much destroyed it. So they're coming here. This is our great advance to everybody. We have a lot of DNA. We have fresh DNA for them. And it's like, you know, the best kind. Mm -hmm. um, and they're trying to breed and create uh, to keep their, their races alive. So I definitely believe in that. I believe there's there are the what they call star children, which are you'll see some of them, some of as they perfect it. The, it's the usually the biggest giveaway is the big eyes. 
Yep. And the big eyes on a oval, slant. Almond oval black kind of shape. Yeah. Yep. And yep. either black or blue. Like like bright blue eyes. Like, oh my God, you have beautiful blue eyes. Um, I know somebody who's um who I suspect is a star child. Um, and they've kind of perfected her. She, you know, she, I've known her growing up. She has like ginormous type of eyes. They're beautiful. It's it's the shape of them, mm -hmm. but it, it has all the right features for both uh, aliens slash humans. And she's super smart, and she's into certain subjects, and she's very intuitive. It's really she has abilities. Then she has some yeah, she she abilities and whatnot. She's able to do stuff, and I don't think she even is aware of all the things she's able to do. Wow. Just like I don't think we only use, what, 2 to 3% of our brain. Yep. Maybe somebody uses maybe 5. Um, just imagine what we could do if we use, uh, hey, um, you know, 10% or 50 or 100, you know. Who knows? Maybe we can float, you know, or, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. But, yeah, I believe that, that they exist, and the reason why they're here is – basically to extend their race. Um, another thing is there is, there's, there's hundreds of, of, of different races of these, these type of aliens, whatever. And um, there are a few that have a Sasquatch ish, Bigfoot ish type of, they're really hairy, mm -hmm. um, but they're not the same Bigfoot that's here. It's just, looks very similar um but you also have some of them that are just arrogant and want to dominate everybody um they're super oh. intelligent like the reptilians well that's all over i mean that even, even humans are like that so there's <laughs> well <laughs> that's everywhere. yeah but the reptilians themselves which are i mean on average are eight to ten feet tall you know they're wow. big um they they have like an iq that's off the chart it's like 600, four to 600, and they despise us. Um, and a they, question for you. Yeah. Cryptids being spotted after UFO sightings. Yeah. What's your take on that? Cryptids being sighted after UFOs. Um, we kind of touched on that. It it's, depends on the cryptid. Um, we touched on Bigfoot, and I think there's interdimensional connection there where Sometimes you will get a UFO, you know, there and it's, it's maybe they're just tracking that as well to find out where it's going. Um, but I think there is something to seeing cryptids. I, I definitely, through my research, make a mental note when I see those orbs or we have a UFO event. Um, we're always on the lookout. Okay, let's, let's go start looking for you know, some kind of cryptid, primarily Bigfoot, because frankly, uh, Al, I hate you for introducing me to the dog man because it's a, it's a nasty, it's a nasty cryptid. But, you know, even with dog men, there's been sightings in, in with lights and events like that. So I, I think it's, I think it's very possible that, that, you know, I've seen some stuff that were kind of gelled like that. The reverse though, we got a cryptid first and then we had a sighting. <laughs> so nice yeah so you had a how many big footing encounters have you had in your you know in in your time of doing this um i've had about five or six um and uh my favorite a lot of them are are distant most of them were distant but two were pretty freaking close um about and, 20 uh, 20 yards or less or, or more than 20 yards how about <laughs> face to face the, the 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 first one i had in 1978 ish um was there was maybe uh an inch between me and the cryptid being the bigfoot oh shit um and it happened at, it's three in the morning i was in summer camp my mother worked as a teacher so when you're a teacher, um, unless you're super mega wealthy, you usually work at summer camp, you know, to make extra money. But if you have kids, they get to go there. That's how it was in a sleepaway camp. And this is in Connecticut. 
it's the northwestern part of Connecticut. And um, my whole bunk, it was a long bunk. We had about 30 guys in it and about three count, three to four counselors. And when the counselors would come in at night from town or being on duty, um, you know, they come in drunk or whatever. When they went to sleep, they shut the light off in the bathroom. So think a long, long building. And then the bathroom light had a little, like two stalls and two showers or whatever. And there was a couple of windows around it. And I happened to have the bed in the corner um, where my, I was on the top double decker and my feet were right by the window. And if you went out the window and you went, if you, let's say you wanted to jump down, it was about seven feet high from the window down to the floor, minimum. Um, so I wake up one night and I smell this god awful, skunky, disgusting smell, but I'm used to it. I'm thinking skunks. Remember, I had no clue that Bigfoot was in the East Coast at this point. Yeah. Okay. I wake up and I have to go to the bathroom and I see the lights are out. So I'm not afraid or anything like that. I said, okay, the councils are back. I'm about to get up from my bed and I could see something moving in my window. Mm. And I, I kind of lean over a little bit and I'm peeking at it. And it's this, it fills the entire window. Holy and the shit. window is, yeah, like six panes, three yeah, on top. Panes. Yeah, 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 three in the bottom. Not not a humongous window. I guess it was standard for the way back when. So maybe maybe three feet on a diagonal. Right, you know? right. Three by like four and a half or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's one of those windows you just slide it. Like you yeah. just slide it through and then there's uh, a screen there. And I'm looking at this thing and it, I start seeing like the shape of – of brow and I see a, a big nose and I'm like, there's a giant monkey in my window. What the hell's going, you know, and I'm looking and I'm kind of getting nervous and it's doing one of these, you know, like, like it's peeking in, but it's, it's yeah. down like this. It's not standing upright. It's down. So it's kind of peeking in the window, looking like it's looking at stuff. Yeah, I'm over kind of looking through the window, kind of yeah. like swaying. Yeah. Like, like what, you know, so I'm like, I check it one more time and I'm like, okay, your imagination's running wild. Let's, you know, whatever. Nope. It's there. And instantaneously, I'm like, I'm frozen. Now, I don't think it was aware that I was up at all. But I froze. And I froze in that bed for at least an hour before my bladder said, you're going to pee yourself and you're going to piss the kid off below you. <laughs> you know, yeah. you have to go to the bathroom. So I slowly pulled my feet back ever so slowly. I slid down the bed and I literally did a, you know, an army crawl <coughs> from one end of the bunk diagonally to the other, but I went the long way under bunk bed. So I at least had some cover and I never saw it again. Wow. Now, the reason why I got the story is because of Al Santariga. I'm meeting Al and I was telling his story about what took place to him in Florida and whatever. And I said, you know, there was, I, I, I said, let me look up i have a photograph of memory mind you i don't always use it but i do mm -hmm. I said let me see you know if there's any bigfoot sightings in that area so i look up and i find bigfoot sightings in that area and the same summer where my camp is it's like right here right next to it is a reservoir big lake mm -hmm. and it's called crystal lake that's where no, they got no, no reference to Friday the 13th, is it? 100 percent a reference to Friday really? the 13th. They okay. wanted to film it in my camp, but that's wow. besides the point. That's where they got it from. Mm -hmm. So years later, they wanted to film in the camp, like Chris Camp Crystal Lake. Get it? So, mm -hmm. and the owner said no because they didn't want the bad press. I would have said yes, burn the buildings down and build me new ones, you know. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's what we needed. But <laughs> at that reservoir, mm -hmm. there were two sightings of Bigfoot right there. Um, and it same year that same summer, same time when I had my sighting, when I had the event in my bunk. Wow. So that immediately said, well, and then I started flooding back. I'm like, where was it? I'm like, Oh, that was that bunk. That was what I saw. That must've been what I saw because our property butted up right against it. And there was nothing there to stop, you know, animals from coming. No. And we also, you know, it's funny, me and a couple other of, of my friends that I made there, we used to go on these, our own little adventures in Sleepaway Camp up this mountain called Blueberry Hill. 
And we found what looked like, I remember seeing it, like, you know, sticks, cross sticks, right? Mm -hmm. Your typical Sasquatch signals and tree structures. But for us, not thinking, it's like, oh, someone must have tried to build a teepee here. Mm -hmm. See the connection? Yeah, teepee. And we we heard snorts in the woods. And when we were on the mountain, I distinctly remember, like, hearing, you know, that snorting sound. I'm like, you know. Maybe there's something up here. Maybe there's like, you know, cows or whatever. So we didn't put two to two together until decades later I did. Um, and the second one, which was pretty damn close. I mean, it was no more than I would say 10 to 15 feet from us uh, at, the, at the, the tail end was uh, in 2015. We were doing an investigation. I don't know if Al told you about it at a lake. We were two miles in the lake was yet a hike around two miles to get to the, the top of the of mm -hmm. the lake and where it was if you kept going to you know try to go around the lake it was a goat trail you would have killed yourself so you have to go back the same way right. and it's by the a Appalachian Trail and we were going to do an investigation there and with a couple other spots and when we were there things started getting a little more tense it's just us three and um basically um we're, we're hanging out, so I'm just going to give you the visual image. If you're looking, mm -hmm. I'm sitting in a chair to the right. I got Al in front of me, and then to the left is this, is our friend Bill. And Al's walking around with the, the parabolic mic, and you can hear the footfall on the, on the leaves, in the litter. And we're like, and you can feel the tension start building, and we're like, okay, that's there's something big moving here. But it didn't sound like four legs. It sounded like two legs, bipedal. And um, did you feel the ground shaking as well, or no? Yeah, you you know what, you did, and I kind of it kind of reminded me of I've been to a couple of agriculture fairs mm -hmm. and outdoor circuses. I don't know if you have them anymore. Yeah, well, when it, I, I remember them as a kid. Yeah, when so the when the elephant used to yep. come in, you kind of feel it. Yeah, you feel the ground. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not like tremendous. It's not like 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 a subway, but you feel there's a presence there. Yep. And it's not just you're seeing it, you're feeling it. I know what you mean, because I went to yep. Brinkley Brothers and Barn and Bailey Circus in New York City when I was a kid several times, and I remember when the elephants come, and you can kind of feel that that vibration on the ground, and you can kind of feel it, you know, kind of trembling through the bleachers. You can feel, yeah. you can feel that motion. Oh, yeah. You, you know, I yeah. mean, it's – so we felt that, and then we had – you know, we heard tree knocks across the water. Then we, we you know, we heard rock knocks, and we're just hanging out there, and um, <laughs> the next thing you know, I mean, basically, um, we get Bill gets a bluff charge behind him. Oh, shit. You can hear it creeping up. And now Al thinks I'm just listening to everything that's going on because I'm, I'm mm -hmm. totally I'm not I don't have my full vision because it's pitch black, but my eyes adjust very well to the dark. I've been in dark spots like that before summer camp, whatever. So I know what I'm doing. Um, and uh, so I'm sitting there, and also, you know, I hear it creep up, and I'm like, what the hell is that? The next thing you know, this thing starts running. You hear, but oh, but you know, like, like it's coming. Bill, I get up, and then Bill starts running. Al grabs him. He says, no, 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 stand your ground, stand your ground, because Bill's going to get killed. Bill's yeah. going to run into a tree, lose his eyes. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a mess. So, I immediately, I know, because I always assessing where I am. Well, I'm not going in that water. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not going to climb the tree. It's, it's fight or flight. So I, I have my machete three quarters drawn and I'm on Al's right. And we kind of form a triangle. So Al's in the point and I'm right. I got his right side and Bill is hopefully recovering, but I'm more concerned with Al and I. So, you know, we, I got to cover more spots just in case something comes at us. I thought, you know, at that point, maybe it was a bear or, you know, so let's let's be prepared. And then we stood our ground, and that was that for the time being. We keep going, you know, going. Um, Bill settled back down. We're hanging out there. But, you know, Al's still looking around, like, what was that? And then <laughs> we get the whoop, whoop. And then, like I told you, two miles down the road, whoop. Oh, wow. No more than seriously two seconds. Whoop, whoop, whoop. But you feel it in your chest. Like, oh. so, I know the feeling. I trust me. I know. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think Al was like, um, 
I was listening with Parabolic Mike at that point, and he was like, kind of away from us. And he's like, I think those are people. <laughs> and I'm like, you're ready. Your freaking mind, those aren't people. <laughs> you know, it's pitch black. So, you know, we, we, we run up towards it where we heard it. And, you know, we have, we, I think Bill had like a 3 million candle watt power light. We have full spectrum. We have FLIR. What was like infrared. a Q beam light? One of those Q beam lights? Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. it's like you know, yeah. yeah. It's 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 amazing. You know, lighting up the place like it was like a concert, and we run up this hill to see it because that's where it was. It was no more than ten feet from us, seriously, and nothing. We see absolutely nothing. We not only do we not see anything, we don't hear any of the trees breaking. Mm -hmm. There's no way it can go that route without right. like you know. That's when I change like. The only way you could do it is if it opens up a place here, like here. This is, you know, point A, point B, right? Normally, you'd just do this. But in quantum physics, you just do this to get to that point. Mm. It's a black hole. You know, you create your own mini black holes. Wormholes. Yeah. So, I mean, so we don't see anything. And, you know, we, we pretty much stand our ground. And we, we're, you know, we, we start sitting. I sit back down again. And we, we don't we don't leave. So I'm thinking, you know, I think out of the box. I think that was the Bigfoot that was on point. Mm -hmm. And when it went whoop, 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 it said to the Bigfoot that was hitting the tree rocks in this, you know, across the way that wanted to come that direction. Don't come here. There's three of them. Go a different way. Mm. And I think that's what it was. It was a scout. Um, wow, it makes sense. It does make sense. And, you know, and they were trying to figure, you know, every, Al had his own theory on that. Bill had it, you know, like what, you know, where they're trying to rack their brains. And I'm thinking that thing just told that mm -hmm. the other ones don't come here. There's three of us. Cause it was three, well, you know, it, it all gelled. If you know, if you've heard of old bear from old bears, den, he kind of has some research studies on the wood knocks and three wood knocks is pretty much, you know, get out of here. There's people coming. So, Three whoops could also mean the same thing. Right. Or, you know, like I said, take take the path that's, you know, yeah. the elsewhere. So so things kind of settled down after that. And I'm sitting in one of these, like, Coleman type of chairs, you know, the fold-up ones. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the next thing you know, I hear, like, something coming from behind me through the trees. Right? Sure. Crack, crack, crack. And you feel the thud. Boom. And you hear the roll, roll hits my tr my my chair and i i go forward i'm flowing forward it's a freaking rock it's a big ass rock bigger than i'm gonna pick up and throw mm -hmm. and it was thrown like it was nothing and he could have killed me if you think about it yeah and i think at that point he was pissed off like damn bastards aren't leaving you know mm -hmm. that was the last thing the next rock. method start throwing rocks at him well there was a big rock like like i hate you guys you know I mean, this is probably like a boulder, you know, it's, probably two foot by two foot, probably weighed about 180 pounds easily. It's, it's big, a, right? It was it was a big enough rock, yeah, yeah, to if it when it hit the it had enough force behind it after it landed and rolled That's to push tough. me out of my chair. Yeah. Shit. Throw me, right? So um and so but after that, everything, all that tension and everything build up. And when I say tension build up, it's kind of like if you've ever been in summer and you can smell the rain coming, yep. you can feel the pressure drop, that's what it was like. After that, it all ended. Boom. Done. And everything was like, and you could breathe again. Back to normal. Back to normal. We're kind of like assessing. And then after a couple minutes, we kind of said, you know, I was like, well, let's go to the next location. So we pack our stuff up. And I'm packing all my stuff. You know, we had all these, we're doing different experiments out there with lasers and, and, temperature gauge and FLIR. I'm putting all my stuff in my little backpack and I was about to put my little camera um, in the backpack and I yeah. said, you know what? This is what I said. I said, Brian, don't be that guy that comes and has an experience and is looking for his camera and it's in his backpack. So mm -hmm. I put it in my breast pocket and then we all put our headlamps on. We started walking out of there for about five minutes. We get to the top of the lake because that's where the pathway goes. Beautiful sky wonderful sky and i think from the direction we were you could see it was like uh south and uh west mm -hmm. so we saw southwest and you know east was this way to, to my left 
and you know stars full moon it was it was gorgeous and we start i start seeing something moving from the west to the east and and we're all walking and you know i notice it and it's weird it's orange and it looks like kind of like a like a big helicopter headlamp mm -hmm. the old school ones it's yellowish orange or orangish yellow yeah. and without missing a beat i go what is that as it's going like this you know it's coming across moving i go what is that it stops as soon as i say it i'm pointing at it and then it's they starts changing direction and comes at us so i'm thinking holy this is getting interesting you know bill's i, I think he was still a little bit like this is crazy you know Shooting up still yeah he was you know, this is crazy and al is in the front because he's the you know he's the point guy that right now he and he's like please don't let them get abducted please don't let them get you know you know, he just doesn't want us to get abducted. He doesn't want to re be responsible for it. So, um, <laughs> you know, that's that's how Al rolls. So, um, so we're we're going through this whole um, this whole uh, what do you call it? This event. It comes to us. It's just above the tree line, maybe twenty feet above the tree line. I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to say maximum seventy feet up. Maximum, you know, seven stories up. You know, and. You hear a little bit of a, like an electronic like motor or hum, and the, while it's there, I reach in. The minute I see it, I start videotaping it. I start go boom. I put the camera on, and this is what I've lived for. This is what I've always wanted, you know, type of stuff. I'm I'm getting this evidence, so I'm holding the camera, and you know, you actually the video is on Bronxville Paranormal Society on YouTube, and you can see the actual video, and you'll hear it. And I think it's like a 30 minute, 30 seconds to a minute worth of video, mm -hmm. which is odd because I know that thing lasted longer than that. And I would have been filming it at that point. Mm. Um, but you hear Al go time check. And Bill responds 915. Now we're literally like five minutes away from the next spot. It's no more than that. Um, and we get this, we, you know, we turn the lights off. So they don't, you kind of don't see us. Then it shines a beam down on us and you hear this humming sound. And in the video, for some reason, you don't see the beam. You hear the time check. Um, it only lasts for a very short period. But in there, you hear Bill say it uh, after he goes 915 when when towards the end of it, he goes, yeah, I think it's going away. It's almost as if he's saying it in his sleep it's crazy so um and the next thing you know we it's over and we start walking to the next camp we set up we're sitting there we're hanging out we, uh, they're doing some video work um al, al and i you know decide to call our psychic over in, in arkansas and he goes uh bro give me a time check and i look at my watch it's 10 to 12. wow so he's like, what? I said, yeah, it's 10 to 12. And we're like, how did that happen? We're missing almost two hours. What's going on? And then it just it just got a little bit crazy from there. There was a, a rip in time space um, that we experienced with someone coming around the, the corner where we thought in that second location. And we had a hung up on our psychic. We were there. We call her up. And um, she's like, what the hell is going on with you guys? You know, and she's telling us about these elders and these forest people and the guardians of the forest there and then we hear these people coming like it seems like you know 20 yards away from us like they're walking like a family walking in the woods mm -hmm. for a pleasure cruise you know or something like that like at midnight on halloween right, right. <laughs> like what do you do with your family you know like you guys want to see something really scary um so we said we hang up on uh, on cindy quickly and and i was like turn your headlight on so you know we don't scare these people there's three guys with with machetes you know you obviously, don't want to scare people right? Obviously not a family right so we turn on the head headlamps to let them know that you know there's somebody there we're waiting we're waiting and we're waiting no one shows up like, what the hell is that call cindy back and we tell her what took place she goes those people aren't there they're going to be there tomorrow you're in a you're in a rip in, in time space and after that it just it was we were like blown away by that we were seeing she told us what we were seeing and i'm what as she's saying to 
So that's, you're going to see like light beings and fairies and or or elementals for the forest. I'm seeing these things going from tree to tree to tree. And Bill and Al have got this, you know, on video and they're looking for it and they see it. You could see it moving from tree to tree. Oh crap. It was it was insane. Wow. Um it was it was a great, great night, but I'll have to check that. You'll have to um if you can share that that if you could try to find that link and share it to me oh, and yeah. I'll post it in the group because that's gonna be really interesting to watch. Oh, that would be awesome. But oh, I, yeah. I think we have some questions if you want to get to them real quick. I'll get to any questions you yeah. want. Okay, because there's a there's a quite of them built up while you're I just wanted you to be able to finish your encounters. Sure. Now is that story over with the encounters or it it, it, it it finishes the next day, but we can get back to it if you yeah, want a later day. That's fine. Yeah, we can yeah. we can always get back to it after the questions if you want and wrap it up after that. So sure. okay. First question. Okay, do any of the Bigfoot speak telepathically or does you do you believe that they do? I actually do believe that that you can use your uh, you use your consciousness to hear them. So tell you know telepathy, whatever you know, you know, using your brain to talk to um, mm -hmm. to someone. I think they have the ability to do it. Now, I have I've not experienced it yet, but something that um, I'm only going to do this with um, like with, I'll, I'll do it with with Al. I'm not going to do it separate with you know. I need to have a, a second party there if not a third but and al and i do a, a lot of this stuff together this is what we do this is our research right. i want to do it with al so that we can confirm what we're hearing and so i'll just tell him write down what you just heard write down if you heard anything write it down mm -hmm. so we can bounce it off I, I want you know you need to have another witness there but i definitely do believe that people have had um telepathic communication with with bigfoot Okay. Now, now, are you on the thing with like the mind speak? Is that is that is that what you would consider? It's it's, it's the same. Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing. Some people call it mind speak. Some people call it telepathy. Right. Um, something that we do and I do is called the CE five close encounter of the fifth kind. It's an active encounter where you use your you you try to use your conscious and your mind to communicate with aliens, saying we want to interact with you. This is a new technique. That we're going to try to, t which we've been very successful with it. We're going to take that into the field with Bigfoot because there are others that have tried doing that, and it seems to be very successful. Oh, so wow. hopefully we can get some interactions and information that way. Okay. Next question. Here we go. What is your opinion on the Janosqua type Bigfoot, Brian? This is from Rick. <sighs> You're talking about the 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 ugly one. I guess the Janosqua is considered the face eater. Yeah, um, the nasty ones. I, I definitely believe. I definitely believe. Yeah, I know exactly what twenty's talking about. Um, I'm I'm gonna say the beast of seven sheets type. I'm I'm, I'm just considered Janoskula, yeah. right? It's yeah. It's it's a it's a it's a nasty nasty. It's like the um, like a baboon. It, yeah, but it's like the it's but it's the same type of temperament as the yeti mm -hmm. in, in Tibet. I do believe uh, they exist. I believe there's more than one type of of Sasquatch Bigfoot. I right. believe there's more variants of them, just like we have different people. It's like people, and, dog, dog breeds. I mean, just well, yeah, one hundred percent. And I think the ones, um, the ones there, there are some where it's just like it's almost like the teeth are coming out, and it looks it's something you don't want to mess with. It bigger, bigger, you know, fangs, canines, more baboonish actually, and protruded um, snout. Yeah, it's it's a little it's and it's very aggressive. Uh, do you think they get confused for dogmen? Do you think if somebody saw that they'd think they were looking at a dogman if they saw the face? Yes. yes. And I think they see this is the thing. So there's supposedly I think I forgot to think who came up. I think it was Vic, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Came up with seven variants of dogmen. Right. Right. From the 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 soldier types. Yes, yeah, so the big the yeti, yeti. Yeah, the baboon. Type three, type two, type yeah, yeah, one. The hyena. A, yeah, the hyena. I think the uh, dogman type. Wolf. Yeah, type threes. I think what you have there is, and I think this is definitely possible, that you have breeding between the two species somehow. That's possible, cross-breeding. I mean, why not? Yeah, and I think that's why you're getting those. And I don't think, I think some of them, just like anything, anybody, any culture, some are going to be aggressive. And some aren't going to be aggressive. I think most in, in general, I think the Bigfoot's just leave me the hell alone. Don't bother me. 
I'm doing my thing and I'm going to leave you alone. Um, the only time I think it gets aggressive is if you get into their territory, there's young, mm-hmm. young, or it's going through a rut. Yeah. Right. If it's, especially if you have females with you and they're going through the monthly cycle, no, that, that. Could, yeah, they that, no, that. Yes. that could be very dangerous because they're, they're not, not really story about that i don't know i don't don't know if you've heard about it but kumbo mentions it the lady was found ripped open her whole body was ripped open on the top of a car and the guy's head was ripped off like it was snapped off like an eraser at some park back in the 80s and they still couldn't figure out who did it but the lady's body was brutally um assaulted down there like to the point where they said no man could have done it and she was just totally split apart after that well i mean just (laughs) (laughs) there's you know uh, Lady Godiva, right? With horses. So just think think of sizes and, you know, let your imagination run wild, guys um, and ladies. But, yes, I mean, I think they are aggressive. I think a couple of the uh, – uh, there's been reports of kidnappings of females. Um, yep, and I think face. it's yep, – Right. Take and, the from right. And I think when you have something that's so enraged with hormones and, and what have you, um, and it's doing its business. It doesn't care what size of the hole it is. Pardon the expression. Oh, horses! You see, I've heard, heard about horses. They people, you know, they, their horses get molested. Their their manes braided in ways that they can't describe. Guess what's doing that? Yeah, well, they're not braiding themselves. They're braiding that to keep the horse from moving. Yep, because the other one's holding it down. Exactly. So it's 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 it's. But again, we're talking about animals. Yeah. So it this. I don't think there's a human aspect to this creature, actually. No. I think maybe there's a little DNA in there that may kind of sort of roll possibly our way, but this is still an animal. It does what it does. So, yes, I do believe in, in those those uh, Bigfoot. Um, and uh, it's them, the Yeti, uh, the Ohio Grassman is another aggressive one. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, some, there's some that are very aggressive, and some of them are live and let live. It depends. It depends on when you catch them. It's like you have bad days too, right? <laughs> now, what's you your know. take? What's your take on like a, the basic southern wood booger? I think it's just you know, it's it's dealing with a lot of crazy southerners down there, and I think <laughs> it's real. You know, I think it's more on the aggressive side of it, um, and they love the hooch. They love the mash. You know, yeah. a lot of those bigfoots you get like the howler, and you know, and the wood booger. They know they know a lot of the boys down there are doing stuff like with with moonshine and and they and they get a stash of hooch the get, you know yep. the mash they get that mash barrel and they're having a good old time. Oh yeah, there's there's a ton of stories uh, from um, you know guys that have been uh, shining and they've heard stories or people that know people that are shining. Yeah. You know, you know, you know what's funny too if you watch the show Moonshiners, um, the two yep. guys. It's not Jeff. It's uh, oh God! It's it's the two older guys. The Mark one and ball. Digger. Mark, yeah, Mark and Digger. And Digger you know, they they have so many booger references um, when they talk about stuff and joke around. It, it's hilarious that they talk about it. They they mention a bunch of booger stuff because no one really gets it unless you know what booger really is in the South. Because booger means Bigfoot, and there's so many roads in the South. There's there's a place in Stanley, North Carolina called Booger Holler Road. So oh, yeah. booger holler, it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You know, um, actually, those guys are my favorite. I, I watched yes. Mark during and this whole COVID thing. I've been watching Moonshiner, and I'm like, yeah, boy. You know, and I you call my daughter it? Tickle. Making it? You're making it yet or what? Once I get, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Once I get out of this of this apartment into a house, I'm definitely going to be running a batch you can buy, of uh, you can buy a home still on eBay for about 100 bucks and make oh, about make a pint of it yourself. Oh, I'm plan, I, I got a, a 20 gallon. If, one it, that's if it's for, if, if, if you're using it for home, you know, for, for your own purposes, then it, it's okay to buy one. That's I'm gonna give it that's out the as, on, the, on the eBay channel. I'm going to give it out as holiday Christmas gifts. Yes, gifting. <laughs> um, gifting everybody. But, gifting the Sasquatch. Yeah, I'm, I'm going through the whole process, and I'm like, okay, I need a good, you know, a condenser. And, and it's, my wife's like, what's wrong with you? And I, and I call my youngest daughter Tickle. I'm like, come on, Tickle. And she's like, don't call me Tickle. <laughs> You know, but uh, th- they do make references to it. It's really funny when you're when you start hearing um, those those references, you know exactly what they're talking about. Yeah. And you know that if if 
I wish they did a show like that. I wish they did an, a show where they asked these guys about uh, what crazy stuff they've seen out there. They've probably seen some crazy stuff, especially the first time they're going to a site, they're exploring the woods. They never even set up yet. They're just they're just trampling through the woods. They're probably seeing all kinds of stuff running around out there. Oh, yeah. And then they get their still set. I mean, those get knocked over and that kind of thing. They get smashed. They, it's funny how they always blame it on bears. Oh, yeah. the bears, the mash. Yeah, sure they did. Yeah, the bear knocked over the oh, mash. TV to just so, so you know that, that they view Cody it, but... at Grizzly Bear, Cody and Grizzly Bear knocked over that mess. Yeah, uh, um, they love that stuff. What's your take? Oh, I'm not gonna say what's your take, but uh, someone had a question about uh, flesh and blood or not. How do you see them from okay. Diana? Hey, Diana, um, I'll tell you exactly what I think, both, and I'll tell you, um, okay. uh, they're, they're flesh and blood, and then they're when they when they go into the interdimensional sphere they change they change their physical makeup um i think i i don't know if she was there for the beginning but she missed uh, that part yeah so what i'll say is this these be like i use the reference of of you know to explain to me how you breathe you can't you just do it and i think these beings and through my experience i wasn't in the non flesh and blood camp for a while but i had an experience which I just mentioned, where it went from point A to point B, which is two miles. Um, yeah, the Squatch Father. Um, yeah. Uh, um, and the only way you can do it is if it can open a portal and actually create that that jump. Because you can do that quantitatively if you change your physical form and you go there. Um, so I do believe that when they're here, they do have physical, they do have, they have capabilities to use infrasound and electronics and they can change uh, um, electronics and they when they transfer into the uh, interdimensional sphere that's why you see a lot of these light anomalies and people that have had issues with camera battery drain so i think they're both it depends on where they are and i think we actually have um some bigfoot that have been here and they're trapped as physical physical specimens because they are they were too sick or they died here and they were unable to you know transfer their body and their their form into the interdimensional so they're buried okay she has one more question on the same lady um she wants to know if do you think you know do you believe they would they would have wanted to hurt you if they if they wanted to or what with the rock uh 100 believe without a doubt if if it if it wanted to to hurt us it could have killed us without even thinking about it. It it doesn't miss with a rock. It doesn't miss whatsoever with a rock. It doesn't miss with a stick. It's not going to miss uh, grabbing you. Mm -hmm. It just didn't want the problems, and its job was to get from. You know, there was three of us. It's at night. They probably thought maybe we we're hunters, so maybe we have fire, you know, weapons. Um, there was a firearms range nearby, so you know. They got to play it the right way. So maybe they just didn't want the conflict. Um, but yeah, it could hurt you if it wants to. And I'm going to say this straight up. There's some really great stories about Bigfoot and, you know, maybe helping out kids and X, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, this is a creature. This is an animal. And it, it's, it's, it's not all about peace and love. There's plenty of them that want you gone. They don't want you anywhere near them. And they will do whatever they have to do to get you out, including kill you. Just throwing it out there. Yeah. Okay. Question from David from <laughs> Texas. Do you believe that the Bigfoot disclosure will come <laughs> anytime soon or in the future? Like the UFO stuff? No. no. Um, Bigfoot is the reigning hide and go seek champs for a reason. Yeah. And they don't need to disclose themselves. The only way that happens is if we raid a, a government lab and we see it there. You physically see something. Other than that, there will not be disclosure. The government knows they exist. Um, I think, you know, like everything else, the government not only knows they exist, it gets rid of some of the issues and problems between them and dogmen. If they become nuisances, they, they have teams to go after them. But I think what everything the government does is try to weaponize it. I think they try to, you know, if they do have a Bigfoot Sasquatch, they're trying to weaponize it mm -hmm. or replicated to weaponize it and you know okay. it's not going to work out good 
Now I got a question for you since you have some remote viewing um, sure. capabilities. <laughs> now I don't know if you ever listened to this channel, but Jeff Nadolny, um, the Dog Man Encounters guy, he has a um, I wouldn't say suppose it, but a guy calls in saying he's an ex government agent. He just retired, and he was involved with the Dog Man Werewolf Breeding Program since the '80s, and his father was involved with it probably earlier than that. Now. They use these werewolves and dogmen as like uh, super soldiers to, as as kind of like a weapon to go. Like I, I think he talked about them being in Vietnam, and the ones in Vietnam pretty much went uh they went a wall. They never came back. So, what's your take on that? I mean, do you believe that? Do you think that's possible? Do you think this guy? I'm not, I'm not going to say he's lying. It's a very it's a very believable story, but it's kind of over the top. But there was also some shows where these guys were kind of. Um, filling in the blanks where what Victor was saying kind of could have actually happened because it goes with other stories that they have from their ranking um, clearance information. So um, I, I don't doubt it. Mm -hmm. And as I said previously, like soft disclosure, I, like he's given out a soft disclosure. Well, he's given it out, but you know, like, look, there's a guy that's that's going around now that says he was the LBL. survivor of yeah, LBL. LBL. Yeah, Roger. Thank you, Carly. Uh, no, Thank you. No, Thank you. no, no, and effing no, 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 no. That was a brutal. Now, do you think that's experience. like a? Uh, you think that's like a um, um, like almost like a disclaimer kind of thing? Like I don't know if you remember the guy with the UFO guy that was going around, and he was was his name Dick something, uh, Dick or Dave. Every time he came out, he was kind of affiliated with the government. He was kind of just like doing disinformation to everybody. Um, God, I can't think of his name. It's in the back of my head, but I think his name was Dick something. But no. he was, he was a, a disclaimer guy for everything. Like whenever someone had an encounter, he would kind of act like he was involved, but then he would kind of you know push him aside and give him fake 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 evidence that was he was connected yeah. to the government. No, I don't know about those guys. I mean, I you know, um, but I, I I just don't I don't buy it. That's. Do you think no. he's like a disinformation associate or what? I Link think it's. A, I, I think what you got is, it's so long ago. You have an opportunist that is read up on it, and is you know there's plenty of people that listen right. to, uh, uh, the, you know Vic Cundiff's Dogman account. You know, you can listen. Just sit there, um, and I always tell Al the same thing. We've have enough research mm -hmm. and the field. We can make up anything we wanted and we'll hit all the right buttons. It's the same thing. You don't understand this. This was such a brutal killing that there's no way in hell they, that what, what did it left one person alive. No way in hell. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. But, um, and as far as the, the other guy saying with the super soldiers, I can see it. You can and see I it. can see them. You know, look, we're, we're I, I thoroughly believe that the United States is in possession. The technology we have mm -hmm. is at least 150 years ahead of oh, anybody. It, it's white well, minimum superior, superior, right? E easily 100, 150 years. Because I mean, there, there's, there's these documentaries with these people that say, you know, the stuff that we have is is pretty much stuff that you know, further than Star Trek has. Yes. And and I really do believe that. Yeah. I also believe that one. They know who Bigfoot is. They know what it is. They know what a dogman is. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they created Dogman or Bigfoot. I think there was just an opportune where it, they had the encounter, and now they know what to look for, and they're tracking them. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're taking some pups, or maybe you know they're taking semen and doing typical scientific stuff or they well, taking the best of the best and breeding what they want the, <laughs> the, the, the you know the biggest strongest one that they have like the alpha male that's 12 foot tall or something they yep. keep breeding his bloodline kind of like what you do with dogs when you when you get a top champion dog oh you yeah breed the top dog to get your champion bloodline maybe the government's doing that with the you know who knows it, it, it very well could happen i mean you know here's something that's very interesting dogmen in general, if you really listen to the stories about them, um, they're very intelligent. Mm -hmm. They're super smart, and they like to mess with humans. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's their their kryptonite, and that's how they get caught by uh, the government. But I know there's there's groups that go out, and their job is tasked to 
get these things or deal with them when there's issues. Too many killings. There's one recently in Kentucky. Yep. Okay. Brutal. So was that the boy that was found dragged like up a up a huge hill and ripped out of his house? Yep. That one, yes. Yep. It was a teenage boy. And, yeah, there was a woman too. Door. Yeah, ripped out of his doggy door, dragged up a half a mile up a cliff in his house, and they tried to blame it on a a, a coyote or a, a mountain lion or yeah. something like that. There's no not way. happening. No. Not happening. I mean, it's just there's no way. But you know, so they will they will investigate it. Park rangers even know that these things exist, but they're not allowed to talk about them. Mm -hmm. It's it's like UFOs at one point. They can't, I can't talk about it. I can't report it. Otherwise, I'll lose my pension, you know? And, you know, one day someone will come out and say something, and but they don't have the evidence to back well, it up. Well, Louis Elizondo is talking about it, but he also, he also mentions that he had to sign a, uh, you know, non-disclosure thing where he can't talk about everything. So. Well, you know what Lou Alexander does did for a living, right? He was CTU. Was he counterintelligence? Yeah, he lies and deceives for a living. So he convinces the, you yes. about things. So, so is, is he the disinformation agent? I, I I just always had a problem. It's like <laughs> it's if you take in consideration what the, you know, th there's there's too hard a press on this. Mm -hmm. There's something else behind this, and mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on yet. But you're not going to get disclosure. I think there's a dog and pony show taking place, and it, it may be money related. Um, I never liked the to the Stars Academy. Um, I didn't like uh, Mr. Blink 182 either. Yeah, Blink 182. Sorry guys. Yeah. But I, I literally Tom, call Tom DeLong. Tom DeLong is yeah. the Lee Harvey Oswald of the UFO community. They are using him. He's the patsy. Yeah, they're using him like a, a tampon. It's just, and to get to whatever and get the groups to believe it, it's a distraction if you really look at it. Because it's a smoke I, show, right? I know those videos. I've known them before they were released. I'm looking at them like this is this is special. I've seen these before yeah. the government announcement. I'm like, what what's what's so special about it? You know, what's the big deal? There's nothing there that really you know blows me away. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you a video. I took in the Bronx and you actually see the craft changing and, and transforming. And at one point you will see another craft that looks like there's a hangar bay that appears for a split second and then disappears. Mm -hmm. That's real. This stuff, you know, over the Nimitz and whatever, it's our stuff. I mean, we're, we're, I'm, this is my opinion. It's our stuff. We're testing some stuff out. We're messing with people to see what we can get away with. And, what a great denial of, of information, right? Just like these TR-3B photos that are shown on an aircraft carrier. Let me tell you something. The, the TR-3B 3B is real. Yeah. Uh, um, and here's, here's just my tell. This is my, my thought process. Um, if you get a really great image of a UFO currently and it's not blurry or, you know, it's crystal clear, um, I'm going to say that nine out of 10 times, it's going to be a government based military drone. The ones, the aliens are like Bigfoot. They've been doing what they've been doing. They can for distort decades. The frequency. They can distort the frequency and vibration. Not only uh, that, blurriness. they can look like clouds. Yeah. They can they just can, it look like a cloud, but you'll see it. You'll see almost right. like, like, like the image of a round oval shaped thing right inside the cloud. So it looks yep. like it's part of the cloud. I've seen that before. Yep. Um, I, and some several pictures in some like, UFO groups I'm in. And it's pretty interesting. It's very interesting. Yes. And when you when you see it in person, you know, you, first of all, I think our intuitive sense is going to pick up on things that are not right. We all have that moment where you go someplace like into the convenience store, whatever, kind of get a stomach ache, like, I got to get out of here. And yeah. you get out, and then the next thing you know, the place gets robbed. There's or you an, somebody there's watching, a, you turn around, you see somebody eyeballing you. Yeah, it's just, you just, yeah. I used to do that on the bus with Al and I always talk. We used to trade stories how we used to do this coming back from the city. Because um, I take an express bus and I'm like, I'm bored. Like, turn around, turn around. And they all creepy and they turn around. But, you know, when you see something that's out of the ordinary, that's not, should not be, it's, that's more UFO than if you saw a craft fly above, you know, it's 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 if it's too good to be true, 
it's too good to be true. But as getting back to the super soldiers, that's so I can answer. Yes, I do believe that that they have programs like this. I, I even believe they've tried to do this with Bigfoot. Um, and I mean, I just can't validate his story. Right. I've I've actually talked to people that I will just say they're black projects. They they do things black military black. wise, and no names. No, I was no recorders, and they're telling you stories. Boom, boom, boom. They've got a lot to lose by telling you, and there's no reason to tell you. Mm -hmm. But it help. I guess it helps them to get it off their chest because. Yeah. Finally, you get someone that, that can believe you. But if even if if they believe you, you feel better. But no one's going to believe their story because they think, oh, they're UFO people. They wear tinfoil hats, mm -hmm. you know. So well, we yeah, all, I, we all do. I mean, if you believe in Bigfoot, Loch Ness monster, dog man, werewolf, UFO, you know, the rake, whatever it is, chupacabra, you got to be crazy. You got to you know have a tinfoil hat. We have one more question, and sure. Uh, it says, do you believe that these creatures and sightings are multiplying or has it kind of just been the same all along? Um, I think they've actually grown. And uh, um, here's here's where my theory comes in. Okay. So, you know, in, in about 2009, there was something that came to light called the Mandela effect. Yes. Okay? This woman wrote about it and she thought Nelson Mandela was, uh, she's a paranormal investigator, thought he was dead, but really found out that he was alive. Oh. So they call it Mandela effect when you think something was one way, but it's really not. Yeah, there's movies. Something. There's movies associated with that from the yeah. Mandela effect. So, so what you no one's paying attention to is the fact that for about I would say a decade and a half prior to the Mandela effect, and I think it created the Mandela effect. The first collider ever wasn't in you know Switzerland over in Europe, you know the the you know, the Holden Collider. Yep. It was in Illinois. LHC. Yep. It, yeah, it was in Illinois and it was for um, Firm Lab. And they created, they started doing it, they ramped up, they started particles and, and, and the whole thing it was the one of the biggest ones. So the ever. particle accelerator started in Chicago, you're saying? It yes. It started in Switzerland. It but was it, before that, but it was a smaller version. It was a pretty big version, actually. Okay. So it was big. Right. And what happened is they abruptly shut it down at one point around the same time the Mandela effect took place. Oh, wow. So my theory is as follows. So one, there's a, if you haven't been paying attention to Chicago, there's a lot of humanoid winged people. Oh yeah. AKA Mothman Moth, being Mothman seen there sightings. all over the place. Yeah. Right? All over these high top buildings, sky rise yeah. buildings. And there's Mothman pictures. Mothman. Yeah. They're flying. Some of them look like pterodactyls. They're seeing them at the airports, and it just so happens that the collider does go through some of those areas there. But what I think happened is um, these scientists played with something they had no idea what the result was going to be. They opened, they created a rip in time space, and they realized they created a rip in time space. That's why they shut it down, And but it was too late. And at that point, different times, different spaces kind of were there and opened, and these creatures that are you know, could be interdimensional, inter different times and space now have a pathway in and yes. out. Open that's why it opened right. a portal or it opened like a bridgeway to get 100%. through the portal. Yep. And when it went overseas, they've been doing stuff that's insane too. Um, and it just keeps getting worse and worse. And that's why you're seeing all these different new uh some of these crazy cryptids because you're getting you're getting information from two different timelines, but it's now part of our timeline so yes i do believe that these these cryptids I, I you know the the reason why they're ramping up and there's more of them is because we've been messing around with things we shouldn't that makes a lot of sense there's a i can't think of the name of the youtube channel but there was one of those one of those kind of like conspiracy theory uh really dark uh youtube channels and they had a lot of stories about things that were happening you know like <laughs> accounts that were happening with the lhc and apparently the channel isn't around no more or barely, you know, every, and like every couple of months, one little episode will pop up and they won't talk about that anymore. So I wonder if somebody got to that uh, person that does that channel and either threatened them or, you know, gave them a, a mo you know, an option. Yeah. Give you an option. But I, I've, I've seen some stuff. See the, the problem in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. I would say since uh, the Obama years, um, information is, 
is not what it used to be. You got to really dig deep in places to get information if you can't depend on YouTube. And those videos are probably out there. And I know a couple spots that where I may look if I just to find them. But yeah, they have. There are some videos. I've seen some snippets here and there of things that they've been doing and really weird stuff too. Um, little sat Satanistic type of stuff too. That's not really cool. Um, well, I mean, you have, you know, the whole Aleister Crowley thing and Jack, uh, Jack Rowell from, um, you know, the creator of NASA it was that same Jack, uh, not them. See, that's the boxer, but, um, yeah, Jack, um, Jack doll. I can't think of his last oh, name. Um, he, oh, uh, yeah, I know you're talking he was about like the founder of NASA, but he, him and him and Aleister Crowley were responsible for opening up the portal and they had, you know, uh, pretty much a demonic entity that they call it, and and when they they drew the picture of this entity, guess what they looked like? A gray alien. Yep. You don't say. Well, you don't. You know. And but this is this is the thing. Now I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of Alistair Crowley. No, me neither. But what he did was, you know, he he discovered he he he's living in a time where there was a lot more research and it was readily available. And when you started getting money, you can actually get more stuff from people. And he started tapping into the forbidden type of arts that are still, you know, they, they shut them down because if they're not used properly, we, you can have problems. And so he went from one end of the spectrum into this darker end of the spectrum because it seemed to touch with everybody's calling demons, but you know, he may be dealing with a specific race of, of aliens that are willing to give him whatever he wants and whatever power he wants to, to do what, you know, to, to help them out too. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of weird stuff. They, well, it, it, it was it, like a you know, ritualistic sex magic and stuff like that. He was yep. in all kinds of crazy. I mean, you know, it's, it's just insane. The things that they were into. Well, Jack, Jack Parsons, that was his guy. Parsons. Jack yeah, Parsons. I was, I was, and, and Jack Parsons, believe it or not, was uh was buddy buddy with uh l ron hubbard the founder of uh scientology now that, how, how ironic is that and then Scientology <laughs> was based on an alien type religion you know an outer body being kind of thing yeah, not, it was not godly so sci scientology is it's a, if you actually understand how it was created it was based off a of bet but go look that up you'll you'll laugh your ass off wow, um crazy. but yeah it's 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 but see this is this is the problem in this world that and this should be a lesson for everybody. Um, be careful who you're following and be careful who you're listening to, yeah. because there are people out there that know how to manipulate people the right way, and then the next thing you know, you're selling roses at the airport, mm -hmm. or you're having sex with 15 people because the high priest tells you to. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just just be very careful. Do your due diligence. Don't believe everything on the on the internet. No. Um, and if you're going to use research, for the love of God, get off of Google and go to DuckDuckGo. Um, yeah. At least you're going to get real stuff that's been hidden from you. It's really amazing what you find with it, um, and with you know when you hide your IP address, because you get a lot more stuff that way. But yeah, I think these people doing you know opening up and ripping, you know. Time space is what really screwed a lot of people. And I think, I don't know. I mean, like, I don't think the, the time we're living in right now, it was supposed to be that time. And I'm not here to debate. I'm not going to debate politics with anybody. Okay. I'm just going to tell you something that falls in that, that genre. Um, there was this whole Q thing. And I knew about Q when it first came out. And I, you know, I'm like, oh, this sounds great, but give me some proof. That That's how I was. Mm -hmm. um, and, there's a couple of things I wanted it to be true at certain points, but something that's always been said is that the, the, the former president always knew in advance what the moves were going to be. And they talk about the looking glass and this is a uh, reverse engineered technology that they have mm -hmm. in the government. It was three components where if you were there, you can actually see the future and you could actually you can actually test out outcomes mm -hmm. um, through this machine. It's like a simulation. Yeah, but it's 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 literally accurate. So if you say, 
you know, what happens if I don't get the Jeep? What's going to happen if I get the Cadillac? Mm -hmm. And then you just press it and you can see what's going to, what the line, the timeline it's is. It's almost like be. those books back in the day with the recorder, with the tape recorder. And if you like, you went the one way, it would take you down another adventure. You right. hit the button, it would take you down that adventure. Exactly. I remember those books when exactly. I was. Exactly. Yeah. Well, something that's very interesting that happened is, you know, they mentioned Trump to this and Trump was using it and, you know, they were in control of it. That's why. One thing that was always said is you you're you you can't stop what's coming. Mm -hmm. No matter what they do, you can't stop what's coming. I got a video. I, if you want, I'll send you a video through a, a weed transfer because it's way too big for you. Mm -hmm. But you should watch. There's an interview with a guy that worked for the government, and um, basically what happened is that no matter how many different times they tried to manipulate the events of the future mm -hmm. the same thing happened at the end you know every time they got the same result come this year this this video was done um way back when about five six years ago more than that um and no matter what they tried to do to, to skirt something the same event always happened so wow. something is something's going to take place that none of us can stop. And I think that part of that is because we messed around a little bit in timelines and, 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 you know, with dimensions, you know, it's, it's funny you say that. Cause, um, I think earlier last year I was watching a, um, a Netflix show called dark. It was called right. dark and it was based in Germany. And, and like the actors are all German and they're, they're actually like the boy goes missing and they go back. Somehow it goes back in time. And it all stirs to this one kid where he keeps going back in time. He's time traveling, and they show him as an old person. And every time they keep going back in time to try to change the history, they're trying to change the history to where a huge like pandemic event where a, a dark matter explosion takes place and makes like an apocalyptic world. Well, right. they're trying to avoid that. And every time they go back in time, something else happens where it changes uh, the outcome but the, 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 like to try to change the outcome of the future, but right. they still can't do it. And no matter what they do, the same outcome happens. So that's funny. That show came out and it was called dark. It was based on dark matter and time travel. But, pretty, did, pretty wild. Did, but that goes along with the fact that if I have a machine that can see all those different yeah. things you're trying to do, then I'm already countering what you're doing. That's why I keep mm -hmm. going back in time further and further and further. It, it, it's, it's, it's craziness. Um, and I, I, I try to put this in, 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 in the same, if you want to think of it this way, in, in Back to the Future with Michael J. Fox, mm -hmm. when he's playing guitar mm -hmm. and he starts fading, that's the Mandela effect. Right. He starts fading. But another part, after everything happens, they go, to, you know, gets his parents together, he comes home. His dad's very successful. His mom's, you know, hot. Right, he's right. got a new car. Biff's, you know, the scrub. He changed the timeline. He this changed, is, uh, this is the Mandela effect. Yeah, the right. time space continuum. He changed the whole thing yeah. over. And then when he goes back into the future, because Biff, you know, did the thing with the sports almanac, it totally changed everything again. So changed it again. Andrew so, Bastiago, question, and his time travel story is working for Project Pegasus. Have you heard of him? I think that was, that may be the um the, the captain, gentleman the captain, one of the gentlemen uh, that were uh, it, it's in this um there's a there's a video called uh, Trump and Project Looking Glass. It was done a long, long time ago. Or uh, they're, they're trying to connect Trump to the Project Looking Glass, but it may be just be Project Looking Glass. That's where you'll find that guy. Yeah, I, I know the name. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And it's very interesting what they can do. Wow. I mean, I, you know, what I do RV-wise, remote viewing-wise is um, – I, it, it's, you know, I usually use it to help people to make, you know, heal them, help them. But, um, I actually use it for the first time and, um, for other matters. I mean, it was helping somebody. Can you use it to track Bigfoot or anything like that? Or, I mean, is it, is that able, is that an ability for you or is that something that's beyond I, how you can use it? I, I have used it, but not to track, well, kind of, sort of, I don't think I can connect to them because I think they're aware of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And it's very weird. I got caught twice remote viewing while I was remote viewing. When I was physically in this where I am now, I was mentally remote viewing elsewhere. My, you know, and I got caught twice. 
Um, <clears throat> in that case, actually, there was one time where Al went out with a couple people to one of the spots that we go to. And he had two different groups there. And I couldn't make it. So I said, look, I'm going to RV. I'm going to remote view this place and tell you what I see. So I saw the, I saw the place and I saw this tree not locked, locked down. And I, I see it from two different views. I see it from an overview looking at, and I see where Al is, and I see where the tree is. And he said, you got people on your right over there. There's a little thing. Then you got the two guys on your left. And I, then I could see the, these, these entities behind a couple of trees in the north of them, in my opinion. And then I see it from the entity's position where I could see it as if I'm from them. I can mm -hmm. see it from them, but they don't necessarily let me always track where they go. So right. when I told Al and I said, hey, you know, I said, you know, you have, you're going to see a little blue flame and a wisp, but they're right behind you. They're right near that log over there. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I got a big, I said, do you have a big tree lying down? If you're looking at the tree, it'll be on your right. You know, like, looks, you know, he goes, yeah. I said, okay, we got to, you know, you, they're, they're going to be behind there. They're watching and they're aware of you. And I tell them all these different things. And Al comes back and confirms every one of them. So I have used it in certain instances like that. Um, again, the only thing I don't do and I will never do is I don't mess around with uh, demons or demonology. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, I don't need that. It's above no. my pay grade, you know. You don't want something to attach itself to you either. You yeah, I got. Attract, I got you don't want to attract that negative energy. Yeah, I got kids, and you know, I can't take that chance. I mean, even though you protect yourself all the time, um, I can't. That would be bad. Right, one more, one more topic before we before we say sure. goodnight. Um, what do you do when you go into? This is my question to you. When you but when you're about to go like looking around for Bigfoot or research some cryptids, how would you protect yourself before? You, would you do? You, would you use like a would you use a Tibetan singing bowl to, to bring them in, or would you bring sage or healing crystals? Or what would you do? What do you pray? You to protect me or yeah, protect, protect them? Protect yourself when you're going in. Um, I, I think it's all about intention with anything you're doing, and we always have the Tibetan singing bowl. That's a, that's a key. Does I mean, that draw them in, or it just there's something about that tone, that frequency the tones. They love it. It, it really? just ramps I, I, up. I have I just got one on Amazon. Oh my I'm God! Done, I'm use it. You know what? There's an app on your. Uh, if you have an iPhone, folks, it's called Bowls. Go mm -hmm. get it. It's worth it. It has like seven, you know, or seven or twelve different uh, singing bowls, and it reproduces it perfectly. You actually can rub it. You know, it's really awesome. It, trust me, when you start doing that, you're sending this vibration out there where it's a little bit more than like. Hey, come out in the woods. You know, you know, it's all intention. They know mentally, they know they can feel your consciousness. In my opinion, they can feel if you're a good person or a bad person. And it's, it's all how you approach it. That's the way, one of the ways to protect yourself. Okay. Um, so good you know, intentions. I think it is with good intentions. You know, if, so, if, if you come in, you know, uh, you know, like, like, like yeah, it's it's not gonna it's not they're not you're not gonna get the interaction you want. You can get hurt. There's nothing that's gonna protect you. At that what, about point. Weapons, what about weapons, firearms? Would you recommend bringing a firearm? You know, something maybe small or a pistol, just to say a cougar comes out. Or I mean, well, my jetty. personal yeah, my personal opinion is if I have to say it this way because I live in New York City, I don't have a firearm. It's okay. it. I mean, I could probably get. 15 you know aliens to come down before I get a license okay. uh, but um, I, I you know and most, I get you I get you yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm not happy about it I'm you live in a liberal close. state it's not your fault move down yeah. here come well, down yeah, to the no, camera no, I'm, I'm working on that I already have my list lined up like <laughs> I'm on one of those I'm on one of those I'm on one of those but if you do have the ability to have a firearm I think and you're going to the woods um, I think that or a shotgun is 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 paramount you need to you need to know what you got going on there in the woods and you need to know how to deal with it and you know bear comes at you yeah. you're gonna want some you know like you don't, you're not gonna want buckshot you want a freaking slug and mm -hmm. you want bear spray and a slug to, to protect yourself cat too you know it's not yeah, it's, yeah. um so i don't right. have a license for that but we you know we do have we do have bear spray um, something I do take is a flare gun just in case it's a 12 gauge, you know, or is it 14? 
We either or it's 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 still like a little mini shit, you know, shotgun in your hand, but it, it, it's a distraction to get you out. Um, you know, you always got to protect yourself going in there. But I think if you want to have a a positive experience with some of these, maybe try to connect to them mentally. Like use yeah. that that CE five technique, that close encounter with Bigfoot technique mm -hmm. that I've come up with, where we just sit there and you say, "Listen, um, I mean, you no know, harm. I just." I've known about you for my all, all my life. I just want to have an experience with you. And, you know, I'm, I'm never going to harm you or, or betray you again. You may have a great experience with that. That's what I say. I say, you know, I'm friends. Of words, you know, I, I'll call them forest friends. I'll say, you know, I come in peace. I just come to say hi. I come just, just to say hi and, yep. and, you know, bring bring you some shells, bring you some apples. I don't do it all the time with the apples. It's once in a blue moon. I usually bring out seashells or dried up straw grass or right. – um, like maybe an old kid's toy for, you know, from, I, I heard they get a kick out of kid's toys a lot. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Kids football. I put my kid's football on a fence. I, I got a wood stockade, like a split rail fence. I'll set the right. football up on, on a post next day. It's on the ground 10 feet behind it. I'm like, no squirrel knocked that football 10 foot back. Yeah, exactly. It's a little experiment stuff I do just, you know, I'll stack rocks up, I'll stack shells and they'll be flipped over the next day or something. Just something, something small that I'll notice that, that something messed with it that has to have, these you know not yeah, this, exactly that, that thought, yes. yeah, yeah yeah you know um we got a couple of people like you know we're, we're working with something where there is like a little bit of a gifting thing going on it's a little bit bizarre gifting but it's going on um i know a couple of, of people up in connecticut uh chris chris reinhardt has a great yes, chris thing going there yeah i'll, I'll know about him he's a good guy yeah he's a great guy and he's from you know i know that town like the back i spent 12 real years of my life up there. So I know it. I had experiences up there too. So I'm going to go back up there and, and go take a look. It's intention. If you, you know, if you got guys that are, like, are looking to hack it up or whatever, they're going to know it. It's, they know it. They can, they can read it in your mind. They can know you have evil <laughs> intentions. It's kind of just like a dog. You go to a house, you, in, in, you know, a stranger's house, they have a dog. If you're a nice person, they're going to respond to you in a nice way. If they know you're an asshole or you yeah. have bad intentions, they're going to start growling at you and, you know, nosing up you at you. Right. Or if you're afraid of the dog, they're yeah. going to say, what's wrong with you? They're going to know that, too. They can feed and off that's of a it. problem, too. So, yeah. you know, you get both of it. Look, it, let me tell you, I, I, I kid you not, when we had that experience and the rock came and the whole thing, I mean, I call it a depends moment. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the charming moment. Yeah. So, you know, you know what puckering is. It's, Pucker, it, the it's it, it, you know, it's craziness right now. But um, I think, you know, there's certain instances where you, you just, you just, when it's bad, you'll know it's going to be bad. And that, that's your gut saying, get out. Or you, you've heard stories too, Dogman and, and Bigfoot saying, you need to leave. And when they tell you, you need to leave, don't just like, you know, well, we're, we're a socially aware couple, but get your ass out. They're not playing the game. Well, that's pretty cool. I, I really appreciate uh, talking with you tonight, Brian. We had we had a lot of good conversations. We're kind oh, yeah. of all around the spectrum, Bigfoot, UFOs, and paranormal. I mean, you you do it all. You're you're pretty much. You, you, I mean, I I couldn't put your bio in my links because you don't know, worry about it. It was like ten paragraphs long. But do you have any upcoming things with any like the Travel Channel, or any shows? Yes, I, I can. We can maybe plug and people can talk <laughs> with you in the future. I mean, I, I don't mind. I mean, whatever. It's, it's not cool. a problem. So I got a couple of books that I'm writing. I'm in the process of writing. One is a Bigfoot book. One is is based off of different hauntings. Okay. And another book actually is connecting um, UFOs, the Nephilim, and, and in indigenous tribes. <laughs> um, so it, and, and and certain types of, of mounds around the around the world. Um, but we I did film with uh, another person. Um, we filmed for a two hour special. That's that's. It's going to be a travel channel. It's a UFO special. I can't go into it, but there's, you know, a couple of big names involved in it. And um, when we did the special, we we told them what our technique was, and we brought the goods. There is actual evidence. We brought it and blew them away. Nice. I mean, they couldn't couldn't figure it out. Yeah. So also, that's coming up. But I also, you know, when I'm not doing that or investigating or being a dad, I do have my own podcast too. So if you want, I'm uh, it's it. It's on. It's called Inside the Goblin Universe. It's mm -hmm. on Podbean, but I also do another show called Nobo Boomy, which okay. stands for Nobody But Me. 
Yes. Um, and we do not just paranormal, but we're going to have some musicians coming on soon, too. Nice. Um, you going to so, have Al jamming on his guitar or what? Al's actually invited to this one. Yeah, it's going to be good. Um, he's getting out his new guitar that he's, that he's showed everybody a picture of. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I got the, I got the baby photos, the birth announcement right yeah. then and there. I'm like, oh, that's sweet. Because I sent them mine. I bought, you know, I, I, yeah. I'm jamming as much as I can. So uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully we can get them to jam while we're on the, we're going to do the live stream. So it could be a loud live stream. Thank you, Diana. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Yes, it was a pleasure to meet you. And well, I'm available on, you know, if you have any questions, PM me on uh, Facebook or, you know, I'm on every social media platform. When I'm not being kicked off by Facebook, right? right? When you're not Speaking being kicked truth. off. By <laughs> when you're not being kicked off by fastest book, but that's okay. When is your oh. next? When is your next monthly meeting uh, with Al? You know the, the the monthly sit down. We're we're it's supposed to be this month. We didn't do this month because I had okay. to do this Florida thing. But we're gonna be doing it. I think I think about two weeks. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get the uh, well, the send, show going. Send me the invite so I can post it in my group and try to invite some more member. You know members. Oh, and, yeah. you know, people in it because there's a lot i mean i was in the last time i don't think you, you remember but i was in the last time asking some questions oh yeah, that yeah. Was the guy that you know the guy with the big muscles with the long hair well, that's um, nick he's yeah, part yeah, of the group he's part of our well, he, group. Was, he was in there and uh i was joking around about having like a weightlifting competition with him and stuff and i was laughing and all that so yeah but he i think his mic wasn't working or something like that and he yeah, had to leave yeah. so. Yeah. His mic wasn't working, which kind of upset me because he knows a lot. Of, he's got great information. I want to try to get him on. I'd like, like to have him on next if that's you know in in the future. Well, and his his girl week, is great too. Beach. Next weekend I'll be at the beach, so I'm not doing anything. <laughs> so I'm yep. I'm going up the street to the ocean. Maybe I'll swim with some mermaids. Are you going back up north? Or are you going to no, go I'm, to I'm North going Carolina? To North Carolina Topsail Beach. It's really real. I mean, it's beautiful. It's like it's go. like it's like Cancun. The waters is really. Like top perfectly clear i mean it, it's amazing beaches are clean wow. you know it's, it doesn't have that nasty uh you know people partying on the beaches all the time it's, it's just a quiet desolate area it's just it's it's really quiet peaceful wow. there's a bunch of taco stands uh restaurants seafood places it's amazing awesome. it's great yeah i mean we're looking to move we're thinking about florida and we're still thinking about it if we get it's just a little bit crazy there but I guys are saying the guys in the group or the, some guys in the audience were all saying come to Texas because the gun laws are great there. Well, I love Texas. Stars at night are big and bright, deep in the heart of Texas. Yeah, I love the Republic of Texas, and I and I do predict in a couple of you know if things keep going crazy, you may see the country of Texas uh, come out and the country of the, of Florida. But I'm looking in the in the South, you know, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. Um, um you know. I don't know Tennessee, maybe just to you know. I need to go to uh, you know friendly states, gun friendly firearm states. For now, until something happens, till they try to change more laws. Not, but not gonna happen. Not in the South. No way. Well, I uh, thank you for having me on, though. I, I appreciate it. I had a great time with you tonight, Brian. Thanks for coming on, and I thank everybody for coming to listen, and thank you for yep. all the great questions. Yo, yeah, these are great. All righty, ciao, everybody. Ciao. Good night.